Welcome to our podcast, Inspiring Living with me, Mark Candelaria. I'm an architect, blogger, traveler, chef, father, and husband. I'm the founder and now a partner of a fabulous 25-person architecture firm specializing in high-end residential architecture, designing amazing homes across the country. We have hosted tours to Italy, Spain, and now Napa over the last 20 years, and in the course of all this, I have met a lot of interesting people who truly inspire me. Our podcast is about all the opportunities that are right there in front of us to inspire living. Yes, we will talk about architecture and design, but every week we will venture into all sorts of topics that will inspire you, teach you, and motivate you to inspire living every day. My guests will include a wide gamut of amazing people from those in the design industry to clients to real estate professionals, chefs, artists, sports figures, and philanthropists, and people who just flat out get it. Sit back and enjoy, and let's have some fun exploring all of the opportunities that are there just waiting for us. Please subscribe and get ready to be inspired every week. Okay, as my dad says, here we go. Okay, we're back here in High Point, day two. Getting uh, my legs under me with the jet lag here. It's three o'clock in the morning in Phoenix, and I feel it feels almost normal to me again. So uh, today is a real special moment for me. I was here six years ago, and uh, was made a connection with a, an interesting gentleman over social media. We'll get into that a little bit. And he invited me to come out here to High Point, and I had just married my beautiful wife, Isabel, who happens to be an interior designer. She goes, oh yeah, I know about High Point. It's a great place. And I was like, okay, High Point. Where where in the heck is that? And so he was starting this new network and I'm like, okay, I've got to check this all out and see what this is all about. But since that time, over the course of the last six years, we've become really great friends. I have the utmost respect for him, his family, beautiful family. (laughs) And now I'm designing a, a home for him right here in Greensboro, North Carolina. And I tell you what, it's funny how life takes twists and turns, but uh, this is one turn that I, I just think has been one of the most fun, exciting turns I've ever had. So I'm here with my good friend and amazing business entrepreneur, Jason Harris from the Design Network, Furniture Land South, and I don't know, you probably have 15 other things going on. Oh, man. Thank you, Mark. It's so <laughs> good to be with you, and I, um, I share... The sentiment of just um, um, just so thankful for the great relationship that we've had uh, over the last six years, and um, and actually super stoked and happy about um, actually working with you now professionally. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, so we've talked about it for a long time. Here we, we finally are. I know, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's great. So we're gonna get out to the job site maybe this afternoon and check that out. It's been quite an adventure so yes. far, and it, it continues to be an adventure from no what doubt. I saw this morning. Yes. So um, so. We just got off the set of your new show. Tell us about that really quick. Yeah. Well, you know, it has really been a journey um, developing a television network. And I'm not sure if it was a stroke of genius or uh, a, a moment of insanity for me to <laughs> consider, uh, you know, developing a, uh, a TV network because I just don't, I, I didn't have any background in media or entertainment. Um, my background, as you know, has been in, um, you know, the home furnishings sure. industry and Growing up in this industry, my, my parents on a shoestring started Furniture Land South in 1969. We're actually cel- celebrating our 50th year of being wow. in business, um, and it's been this American dream success story of the business that they that they have built. Um, just from really nothing, they built the the world's largest furniture store. Um, and, uh, you know, we're the largest furniture store in the world and the furniture capital of the world, 1.3 million square feet of showroom space here. And people really travel here from all over the world to shop for oh, home yeah. furnishings. We represent like a thousand different brands of furniture. And, um, you know, it's, it's a business that I've been passionate about and an industry that I've been passionate about. And so six years ago, um, when things weren't so great in right. the industry, a lot of people were sort of trying to figure things out. You know, the economy uh, was down. And um, I was at a roundtable discussion with a lot of these executives in our industry that were, you know, just trying to battle their way through this rough economy. And, you know, I, uh, uh, there was a question that was asked at the table. Um, was the question was, you know, wh- what are we going to do? You know, h- how are we going to how are we going to improve uh, the whole situation, our, our, our whole situation, <laughs> our industry? And the answers that I heard from these executives really sent me into a whole different direction in my career. 
um, because I didn't hear them say anything about our target consumer, our target audience. It was really very supply chain oriented. And, you know, we make a sofa for $1,000 today. If we could make one for 800 right. we'd sell so many more of them. So they were, they were stuck in the logistics of everything. They were just stuck in logistics. And, um, you know, I felt like we were an industry that was really doing, doing a lot of talking to ourselves. Right. And I said, we have got to get the consumer involved in this conversation. Um, and, and so it dawned on me that the most powerful way to uh, to connect is really through the television screen, you know, and storytelling. And um, I just, I knew that there was going to be an apocalyptic change in the way that uh, people people watch television. It had happened. The internet had changed so yep. many other industries like publishing, sure. like the music industry, but it really had not impacted television yet. This is about six years ago. Yep. And I said, I know that it's going to happen. I'm watching my kids, the way that, that they Inter um, interact. interact, the way that they consume content on their yep. devices and YouTube and on demand. And um, I said, you know, HGTV has kind of been the only uh, game in town in sure. terms of, you know, design programming. And they really don't, they don't do design programming the way that I know design, the, right. the industry that I've grown up in, knowing all these colorful personalities, these designers, architects that do so many amazing things. I just didn't see that on television. Right. And so um, I said, why don't we start a streaming you know, version of this. And I, I thought, wow, the design network would yep. be a, a cool network to start. There was no design network nope. at the time, which I could not believe. And so um, I went out on a limb. Yeah. You know, frankly, I just um, went way out there on that limb and had a big business plan to, uh, to get this thing off the ground and started. And I approached a lot of the vendors that we represent at Furniture Land and, and asked them to uh, to be like co-founding sponsors of the network. It was such a clear vision in my mind and, um, you know, and with my, you know, talking with my family, my, my dad didn't really have uh, a lot of interest in investing in this and, and said, you know, you're going to have to bootstrap this thing and figure out how to pay for it. Yep. And um, so I went to our vendors first. Um, I was a little bit uh, devastated, honestly, at the <laughs> response. <laughs> the the response. Um, but, you know, slow, but we did get a few companies that kind of believed in what we were doing, uh, just enough to sort of get a website together and start sure. scratching a few videos and content together. And, um, and, I, and we were off to the races. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's been it's been a lot of work to try to um, to try to get this thing moving and going. But th but we have this. I think the thing that's helped to make it work is these amazing, authentic relationships with we that we have with the interior design community, and really the fact that they don't have a home on television, mm -hmm. and um, and so we were able to kind of give birth to this network, and we started with a few of our vendors that supported it. Once we we got some content together and sort of created an essence to the right. to the platform, it grew from there, and. Um, we we've just you know we've gone down some roads with this that maybe weren't the right thing to do. It's a lot of experimentation and yeah. development. We we tried to do maybe too much um, with making the shows shoppable and things like that. Um, but we've we really have found our way with it, particularly over the last six to eight months. Interesting. As um, as we brought in some uh, some executives, really from the in entertainment and media industry, that have really helped to kind of propel us along. Right. And we've been kind of skating to where the puck's going, Mark. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're I talk about that all the time. I yeah. mean, I, what I see <clears throat> with the, you know, I, I'm very fortunate. I, I get to meet a lot of amazing businessmen in my field designing houses for them. And the one thing I've learned, and I've heard it on podcasts, and I think it's so damn true, is, you know, so many people will sit there and plan and plan and plan, and but never pull the trigger, and and they wait for the perfect plan to pull the trigger, and it, there is no perfect plan, right? You know, and so what I what I loved about you, and what I've what I've really enjoyed watching, is how you just pulled the trigger, and you let's like you say you've been steering the puck towards the goal as you go. Yeah. And you do it with conviction and drive and, and so much passion. To me, that is always the key yeah. component to success. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of been ready, fire, aim. Yeah. You know, for us yeah. a little bit. But, you know, just knowing that the, the vision is right, um, I know that. Um, you know that this. The, I've known that the whole television industry would would really oh, it's evolve changing radically. And, and streaming. You know, cable and satellite TV just will be like an eight track cassette. Right. You know, 
And um, I just, I knew that that was going to happen. It's just like when and how, and can we get there? Right. And so, you know, we, we just start going down that path. And some, sometimes you, got, you get going down a path and that's not the right path. You got to pull back a little bit and get in reset. But fortunately, I've been able to surround myself with some, um, some amazing people that b- have believed in the dream mm-hmm. and the vision with me. And I just, I've always felt so Put confident. me in that corner for yeah. sure. Yeah. And, you know, Mark, you were one of those people for me um, early on. And it was, um, I think it was Mira Perrin. Yeah, maybe, Mira Perrin that, who connected us. That worked with you. And yep. so she somehow through social media saw what we were doing and building. And she just sort of reached out to me. Yeah, that's exactly and made, right. And made that connection. And so I was so nervous when I got you on the <laughs> phone for the first time. Uh, I'm like, look at this guy's work, and he's larger than life, and um, and so I just love that we did make a connection, and yeah. that you were interested in what we were doing, and so we, you know, we we put together. I said, look, I've got a little bit of budget that I can put into right. this, and can you make some great stuff? And so you then took took that. And you know, created a, a little show, a short, you know, short form series right. of your own that we did a couple of seasons of early yep. on, which also helped to really propel us forward. No, and the same thing. I mean, it's you know, we could have sat there and, and fine tuned our episodes forever and never gotten them out there. Right. And, and you just you you helped coach us. I learned so much not only from you but watching the other episodes and how it's done. And <clears throat> I think you hit something real critical that, a minute ago in that. You know, what we do as designers is so visual. So it's like the perfect thing for, for the medium that you're operating right. in. You know, and the other thing that I notice with myself is, you know, there's you sit there and you, you turn on the TV or you stream or you look what's on social media, and there's so much noise that's so negative, and the news is just like, oh, my God, I don't even want to. And you know what? I love going to the cooking channel, mm-hmm. and I love going to HGTV, and I love going to your platform right. because it's beautiful and it's interesting, yeah. and no one's getting hurt, and no one's yelling at right. each other, and it's just it's it's and and it, then you, it inspires you yeah. to do that in your home. Absolutely, you know, it's inspirational, it's aspirational, it's a safe kind of clean place to be. It's awesome. And it's colorful and it's beautiful design, and I think we, you know, my vision for this was really to celebrate that, celebrate design, where I think. You know, HGTV has been uber successful right. and, and thrilled for what they've been able to accomplish. But, you know, I wanted to bring color to the game. I wanted to bring design. And I really wanted to bring um, the things that I've grown up around, in and around and thinking, man, if this were on TV with high production value sure. and people could see, you know, see the learn about the great quality materials and, and objects and furnishings that are even available. Right. Um, and, and how these these art artists really, which I think this, these design these designers are really artists how they can uh, put these things together but right and there's a whole new generation uh, that's coming up now that hasn't been exposed i think to a lot of great design yeah this, mil- this millennial generation oh, yeah. so we're really tr- programming for that for that audience i think it's big my daughter's 31 and this weekend actually they they're really close to closing on their first house i mean the millenniums have waited i think 10 to 15 years longer than we did mm-hmm. to buy their first home right but i boy i tell you what i always say whatever's happening in my family that's probably n- what's going on in 90 yeah. percent of the families out there sure so they're buying a house what are they going to do next they're going to go, go buy furniture absolutely you know and that's all she's talking yeah. about now is furniture right. and it's furniture and it's design and it's um it's how how do i um how do i live a better life at home right. how do i entertain my friends at home right you know and so they're discovering these things i think for the first time and so we're focused a lot on interior design and decorating, but also organization at home and right. landscape design. And we call it the lifestyle. It's lifestyle. It's a lot of lifestyle yeah. programming, and there's so many experts in the space, and there's so much to talk about. Sure, I mean it's it's pretty much endless. I always tell people it's like music. I mean, yeah. you can write songs forever. You're never going to run out yep. of notes. You Absolutely. Know? So, okay, so I love what you're doing. We'll come back to some of that stuff. Uh, you know, I'm, like I said, I've known you for about six years, and I have to tell you, you have one of the most beautiful families I have ever met, starting with your lovely bride, Jenny. Yeah. And tell us about how the two of you met and about your children and family, because yeah. you're a real family guy, and I always admire that about you. I mean, you're working your butt off, yeah. but you, you are very committed to your kids and your family and your, and your lovely it's wife. It's my world. It is yeah. my world. Um, and I'm so passionate about my family. I've got a beautiful wife of 24 years. Wow. We dated four years before that. Um, and five beautiful kids, two of which are in college, both at UNC Chapel Hill. Yep. Um, I've got a high schooler, a middle, middle schooler, and a, a you know one in elementary school. So we got the gamut. <laughs> you covered. got the whole gamut. We do, and um, you know they're they're doing well. Uh, Jenny, my wife, we we both also went to UNC Chapel Hill, which is where we met. Oh, that's cool. Um, I you know was an athlete in high school, played football, basketball, and baseball. 
and found myself at uh, UNC Chapel Hill without, you know, didn't have that in my life anymore, a sport that I was playing. And I did play a little club baseball in my freshman year. But a friend of mine was on the cheerleading squad, uh, and he was having such a blast and was so in shape and had such a great community. that, um, And so uh, he could do a back flip. He could do a back tuck. And um, I said, man, I've got to learn how to do that. <laughs> so he took me to the gym. I learned, like, the first day how to do this backflip. And all these beautiful cheerleaders, this great community was was there. And they they actually recruited me to join the cheerleading squad. There you go. And, um, and so I became a cheerleader at UNC Chapel Hill. Um, it was one of the neatest things that I ever did. And, and uh, Jenny was an uh, incoming freshman. She was recruited out of high school as a cheerleader. Wow. She was my first partner. And we just were really, really good friends uh, at first. And that sort of grew into like a really, really special relationship. Yep. And uh, we could not get enough of each other in uh, in college. And we dated all through college. And as soon as she graduated, um, we got married. Yep. And, you know, started a couple of years later, started our family. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, you two in my book are like in- inseparable. I mean, uh, when I think of you, I think of her. It's just like I think of yeah. I think of you together. Well, I pr- I, and I'm grateful for that. She is uh, one of the most... Uh, giving people oh, yeah. you've ever met in your life. She's got a heart of gold. Yeah. She comes from a great family. So I really, that's that's the thing that I think I'm most proud of is just um, our relationship and then the kids. Um, we have four girls and one boy out of the bunch. <laughs> and, um, you know, my, my daughters were on um, – fall break this week yeah. and uh, my oldest is now in travel she she's in the business school at UNC she spent the summer over in London studying abroad um, and she's and they're both on the dance team uh, at UNC so they're yeah I they're, see the pictures on Instagram they're yeah, awesome they're dancing in the football basketball yeah. game so it's it's been uh, great to kind of have this legacy moment for us um, at UNC Chapel Hill and kind of reconnecting down yeah there. that's awesome so w- with the business I mean obviously you're in- incredibly business with busy with this business you got a family you're doing a lot of stuff there how do you balance it all how do you how do you de-stress how do you how do you manage that part of your life well um i don't really know other than just i feel like i've got a great um five to nine Mm -hmm. i think if you don't have a good five to nine then you can't have a good nine to five (laughs) you know right right and um and so i just i feel blessed that i've got that structure and in in my life of just a great home life and, and an awesome family um and you know it's just uh, there's certain things that excite me of, you know, being an entrepreneur and creating and building something that hasn't existed and, right. and, and connecting the dots and, and seeing... It's when like I, a big Sudoku puzzle. Something like that, <laughs> yeah, and just being able to connect people. But, you know, look, um, it's just I am grateful for such a great foundation that my parents built and created with our right. with the sort of the goose that laid the golden egg, which is our retail furniture business. And I've got a brother who is... Uh, is killing it as the CEO of our the retail side of our business yeah. of Furniture Land, um, and you know we just we're kind of yin and yang. We play off of each other, and um, you know it's kind of given me a little bit of flexibility to to sort of start this big new venture, but also be continuing to be very plugged into what we're doing on the retail side as well. Um, but just you know balance. I mean, it's just kind of taking one step at a time and keeping the big picture in mind and yeah. just having fun. So how do you get away from it all? How do you relax? Well, we um, we love the beach. Yeah. Um, we did. We were fortunate to be able to invest in a, in a beach house in Wrightsville Beach about six years ago. That's kind of our happy place. And Anne-Marie, we, who we talked about earlier, yeah, she, so, she did the interiors. Um, Anne-Marie, who is a designer who I respected tremendously that I met through uh, my good friend Jim Nance, the sportscaster with yep. CBS. Um, and, you know, we, we did it. We had done a project with Jim. He was sort of did commerce, TV commercials for Furniture Land for a couple years. And um, he, he, uh, Anne Marie was his designer, uh, connected with her on a personal level, level, loved her aesthetic. And when we had this beach project coming along, um, I asked her if, you know, she lives in Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm like, what do you think about doing? A beach project in Wrightsville Beach, and um, it was a fit for her. Um, she said she does out-of-state stuff all the time. It was one of the best decisions we ever made because she created just a, a, a sanctuary for our family to be able to get to. But yeah. you know, to I mean, I also enjoy golf um, uh, on a daily basis. I run. I'm a runner. There you go. I think that that's really cleansing for me. Get those um, endorphins. Absolutely. Yep, yeah. Right. I feel like I do my most creative thinking yep. when I'm uh, out there running. Um, but just, yeah, I mean, just fortunate to, to have a lot of different outlets to, to have some fun. That's perfect. So I know life is not always perfect and it's not always easy. What have been some of your challenges and how have you kind of overcome some of those challenges in life? 
Well, that's a great question. And, you know, I think anytime you take a risk and you take a step out, you're going to encounter some challenges. You're going to, there's going to be things that, um, that, that you face that, you know, you never dream that right. would be in your way. And now so when people look at us, they always go, Oh, they, you know, he goes to Italy, he does this, he's yeah. got such a perfect life. And, right. you know, not, no one has a perfect life. Right. Yeah. Right. Nobody has a perfect life. And, you know, I think I, I, one time someone told me that, you know, very few people that s- start businesses actually make it in business. Right. Most businesses fail, yeah. you know, especially totally. within the first few years. And it's almost like, um, you know, this analogy of you're, you're, you're going as hard as you can on, and then you, you reach a wall. You know, and so all these people are up against this wall. Who's gonna Who's gonna climb over that wall and right. keep going? Right. So I would say the first ninety five yards are, are they're hard, but they're pretty easy. It's the last five. Yeah. To get over the goal line. Well, that's that true. are the toughest. Yeah. But this the wall. That's where most people you, quit. Yeah. But so some some people will climb over and get over that first wall. Sure. Ninety percent of the people will not make it over that first wall. So right. if you just you, you're gonna get there. You're gonna get hit the, the yep. hard times. If you get over that wall, you got to keep going. So then you you reach that next, next wall. Yeah. They're always so there. They're only, always beyond you. There's only 10% left. There's <laughs> only only 10% of that right. 10% are going right. to make it over that wall. So uh, I think that I learned this probably from my dad more than anybody, that um, of all the traits and characteristics of a, uh, someone running a, a successful business, I think it's persistence yeah. and staying with it. Yep. Um, you know, and just figuring um, out a way. Figuring out a way. Just, just fi- and, and that's one of the things I've loved about working with you, Mark, is like, you know, we've had uh, on this project of designing this new home for my family. Um, we've encountered some some obstacles and challenges along the way, and and you you always are so positive and so solution oriented that well there is a solution. We're gonna find a way. We'll <laughs> yes. solve this. We, just, right? we got smart people sitting around this table. Yes, we'll figure it out. Yeah, you know it's true. And yeah. I've I've applied that to life, and my Italy trips have taught me the same thing. It's like there are always hiccups, right? You know, but we can't just abandon the trip because there's a hiccup. Right. It's totally. like okay, we got to invent something quick. Yeah. We've got five minutes. Yeah. What are we gonna turn it into? And those have become some of the most incredible experiences for my travelers. And yeah. I've learned from that yeah. that it's the same thing with everything in life. Right. You know, just keep going, figure it out, and yep. move on. I know. And I just you know? I don't have much tolerance for negativity. Like, I, And that's one of the things I love about being around you. And, and I just I don't really allow that to be around me. I, just, right. I want the positive vibe and the positive energy, and I just feed off of that. Yeah, and that's what I tell people, too. It's like, you know, if you, if you sense that negativity... Just get away from it. Get away from it and find someone positive. Right. You know, they're out there. And yep. when I find the more you find those type of people, the more people like that you find. Right. You know, they're just, it's like, I don't know how to explain it, but yeah. so they I've clutter that, together. You know, yeah. it's like glue. It's like magnetism. Absolutely. And I, I've heard that you are the average of the the five people that yes. you spend the most time with. I say with. that all the time. Yeah, so you're the average of them. Yeah. So look at those five people, and that's kind of... <laughs> that's who you're you're going to be in the middle that's, of that. That's who you are. So basically. it's so important to find those five people Absolutely. that are, are elevating your game, encouraging yep. you. And uh, that's part of the reason I loved working with you on this whole project. Uh, not only your house, but, you know, the design network is... I learned so much doing that with you. Yeah. And I remember Anne Marie and I were talking about this the other morning. I remember we were on the set back in 2013 and you were showing us something on Instagram and I'm like, what the hell is Instagram? <laughs> he said, well, you got to get these hashtags. I'm like, what's a hashtag? Right. <laughs> like and, uh, after that, I mean, I learned so much from you oh. through that whole experience. Yeah. And so. it just keeps evolving and moving. Yeah. It's, it's just incredible. But you know, some of these foundational things that, um, you know, when we, when I started into this venture that, you know, um, we totally believed in, which is the power of video. Yeah, is just Big. incredible. Um, the power of storytelling. You know, um, that was one of the key things you taught me was storytelling. Yeah, totally. And yep. so people love a good story, and uh, they can they can really learn so much through video, so much more so than than any other medium. Yeah. And so that's why I created this network six years ago, and we've been we've been producing we've produced over fifty shows. Um, again, short form, sort of web oriented mm-hmm. content, but we've had really a breakthrough over the last several months with the network. And again, just hoping for this moment and it's really kind of arrived for us where and the consumer is totally driving all this like right they're cutting the cord and there's this whole generation these millennials we just talked about who don't even know what a cord is right they, they've never thought of cable yeah. and place and totally time different and perspective um, and so you know that they now these platforms are out there that are getting they're streaming millions of hours and and they they want new fresh 
content that's right. maybe, and there's still, um, it's it's tough for these traditional cable uh, networks to actually make this transition into streaming yeah. because they still are, there's there's big, big money oh, they in, got all that in infrastructure. the cable world, yeah. um, these cable operators, and that's where they get a lot of their, their revenue com- from. So we just happen to be in a, in a place in time where we've built this library of content that is pretty much evergreen for the most yeah. part. Um, and, um, and so we, we were actually went out um, to a television conference in Santa Monica, California, um, back, I think it was like June. And um, we had connected with this company called Whirl, W-U-R-L, and they actually had the missing pieces of the puzzle for us, hmm. which um, allowed us to um, to take our content and sort of program it into like a linear stream, interesting, um, with, and put in ad breaks, and, um, to and make, just keep it going to make yeah, just like just like a, a, a like a traditional cable channel where yeah. it's a lean back experience, and frankly, our genre. Um, is is really better in a lean back experience. It's mm-hmm. not one where you're going to go and and uh, on demand and kind of pick this show or that show. It's more about kind of just turning the TV on and having, having it, it on. on. So Whirl was uh, just actually had the software that would allow us to kind of program out a 24 hour day channel. But the bigger piece of this was that they also had the connections into a lot of these big platforms like Samsung TV Plus right. and the Roku Channel. Um, Sinclair and all these different platforms that um, that uh, you know sort of lean on them for these these twenty four hour day streams and so they they made the introduction to us um, we and we just ha- developed a great relationship it, it's which is also a testament to people and relationships sure. this, these things don't just happen by themselves but uh, we were out there in Santa Monica at the TV conference uh, spent some time with Whirl and they said we got to get you on Samsung TV Plus first they're they're just killing it and, and basically what that is is Every television that Samsung sells, yep. I think they're I've the got number one. Three or four of them in my house. They're awesome. Yep. Uh, the number one consumer electronics brand. And so people buy these TVs, they connect them to the internet, and they present the the user with this basically electronic you know programming Menu. guide and yep. all these channels. Yep. And people are defaulting to that. It's so easy, you know, as as like their entertainment. Sure. And and so everyone thought it would just on demand is where it will be forever. But people just, they, they do enjoy just turning it on yeah, the and, letting, and letting it go and letting it play. And, yep. and they're doing other things in their house. That's me. And so they, they, I'm sitting there drawing 15,000 roof tiles and bricks and yeah. I'm, I'm watching the channel. Absolutely. So yep. we, we found ourselves with this great connection with world. They connected us in. Um, and we, we actually, on that same trip, they connected us with this guy named Takashi Nakano, who <laughs> runs programming for Samsung. We went to the Samsung headquarters wow. and just sat with him. And he actually had, had a background with scripts. And so he understood the lifestyle space. And they're really looking for lifestyle, female-oriented programming. <laughs> and uh, he loved, I uh, think, more than anything, the passion that yeah. we had yeah. for this genre. And so we, we just left out of there with our fingers crossed. And after a couple of months, um, the, they 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 wanted to do a deal with us. They wanted Perfect. to bring the design network to Samsung TV That's Plus. Awesome. And so all of a sudden, we find ourselves in a whole different zone. And you know, we we knew that we had to quickly ramp up our content and our production. And so right. um, I brought in some great executives that um, that really have the, the entertainment media background. And yep. so we started working on our programming for the, this big fall launch. We're actually launching on Samsung TV Plus on November November the twenty seventh. But okay, that's which my is question. a perfect time. Yeah, right. Thanksgiving, you ever been sitting around? Thanksgiving weekend. Perfect. That's the huge busy time for these uh, com- com- people are buying new TVs. They're yep. sitting around the house. They're holidays are holidays, coming. Holidays, entertaining, and there it's a lot of discovery happens. And so, um, and and actually, Samsung is really in, um, excited about our launch as well. And they're they're planning on promoting our channel, um, you know, uh, throughout the, their Samsung TV Plus app. And so um, that's we, awesome. We kind of moved into production of a lot of new longer format shows. Yeah. Um, and so the next six months are really a big time for our network. Uh, what we're doing this week is we're we're f- uh, filming a brand new talk show. Uh, again, sort of leveraging all these amazing relationships that we have with the design uh, industry. And I enjoyed sitting with you on, yeah, the, couch, it was on fun. the couch this morning as we filmed a great episode. But the this big tent pole show, which means sort of a, a, a staple of the network, something we think will be sort of central and big and a big part of the network right uh, is this talk show called couched with carson kressley yeah he is amazing i talk i mean he, what he reminded me of was robin williams with his quickness and his wit it's like 
Was yeah. this scripted or is this right. he's just firing it off off his neurons? It's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how the guy does it. He's got a little story for every single thing that could possibly come up, and it, yeah. and it just he pushes it a little bit to the edge, which gets people. Oh, you, you know, just keep, holds your interest. Yeah, it holds your interest, and you laugh. You can't help but laugh. Yep. he's just an amazing, amazing talent that yeah. also has. A, he's not a designer, but he's an he's a design enthusiast, and right. so he he loves the industry. He's a he's he comes more from the fashion yeah. industry. Well, street. that's where I remember discovering him on TV many years ago. Yeah, I mean, he was on the original Queer Eye, yeah. uh, which now has you know come back uh, in a new that version. That used to be a great Netflix, show. Netflix, but he uh, it, and so one of the guests we had on last week, the show was uh, was Tom Felicia, and yeah. just to hear them tell their stories, you know, was amazing. But we the guests we've been able to pull together, uh, Jamie Drake, uh, yeah. who is uh, this prolific designer, works with Mayor Bloomberg in New York, works with Madonna. We've got crazy tomorrow. We've got Martin Lawrence Boulard, who's flying here from L.A. to be on the show uh he works with the kardashians yeah um but just you know kelly Ellis. No, your content is is awesome and just it just grows and gets better and better and better and yeah. so it's like i said I, i've just loved watching the whole evolution of what you've done with this whole thing oh thank you so it's that's very very cool um so in the spare time we are kind of uh working on a little project together here in greensboro yes right yes you kind of reached out and said, "Hey, Mr. Candelaria, let's yeah. uh, let's do a let's do a house here for us." Yeah. Well, you know, ever since I um, met you, I hoped there would become an opportunity for us to work together. Oh and, yeah. Um, you know, we we actually have lived in this on the same piece of property ever since we got married. We we built a house when we first got married. Uh, we lived in it for about ten years, and then we um, this, we dreamed up this big major renovation in addition to right. the home, which we did, and so we've now lived in that for another 12 years um and the last several years there's sort of some changes that have happened um around our property you know they've widened this street so what was kind of rural has sort of um you know become almost like a highway in our front yard they put some <laughs> utilities out front um and so you know for several years now we've been looking for that right location that right spot because like we're like we just we want to have a, um, a great home to have for the rest of our lives right and we want legacy we, property yeah and um and i've we're members of this country club in greensboro where there's a it's a wonderful golf course a, a donald ross course it's called sedgefield uh country club and i love playing golf there with my friends and my brother lives out there yeah. and so we've been looking for several years and this incredible piece of property that's like 13 and a half acres right in the heart of Sedgefield um, has been, uh, in, and it had a large uh, old mansion on it um, that was like 90 years old. And, um, you know, we just, we fell in love with the property, even though it was, it had been neglected and complete, completely oh, overgrown. Yeah. Um, and the sort of the third generation of this family had, had inherited it. And they were just kind of were ready to, none of them had any interest in going there and, and doing anything with yep. it. So we put an offer on it. Um, they accepted it like the next week <laughs> and we were, we were sort of on our way. And um, it's been fascinating because the, the, the property is, it has so many amazing features, sure. uh, old trees, old oak trees that are stream, a pond. Old. Yeah. It's got a pond. And <clears throat> one of the neat things is that it was so overgrown that people didn't even know there was a pond there. So I, I, we spent the first six months just kind of cleaning up the property and discovering yeah. what all was there. Opening it all up. Yeah, just open it all up. We got rid of these dead or you know trees or you know uh, just all this over you know underbrush yep. and overgrown things. But this this pond we discovered um, actually, I mean, it had like thirty year old trees growing out of the middle of the pond. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we just we got in there and dredged the whole pond and um, and discovered that I mean there was like a, a boathouse yeah. and like a gazebo mm -hmm. there and the pond is actually lined in this beautiful stonework um, that we just could not believe so we've we've opened it's the gorgeous. property up and immediately <coughs> I reached out to of course Anne Marie who we knew we wanted to work with right. and uh, and just and um, you know started thinking man do you think this would be a fit for Mark all the way out here in North Carolina and you'd never work with Anne Marie. Nope. But I feel like, um, you know, we've Good put, fit. we put the dream team together and then throw Jeff Berg off in the mix. I brought then, you Jeff. Yeah. And Wally. Yeah. So <laughs> I, and we, sub, you know, just sort of submitted to the uh, to the process. Right. Yeah. And and you, you know, you you have a plan of how to do this and yet you, you have to be willing to spend some time on it because yeah. there's going to be a lot of, you know, give and take and, and planning. So every every couple of weeks we get yep. on these conference calls and. 
Um, it's just exciting for us to envision like living in this this type of a home that is really, really designed and planned for our life and our family and for this particular piece of property. Right, and I commend you and your family and the time you've taken in, in really thinking this through. I think a lot of people try to rush the design process because they're so eager to build. And I think what I see working the best over the years is take the time to design, get it all detailed out, get it all specified, then let your builder build. It's going to go twice as fast. It's going to cost you less money, less headaches. Yeah. And so I really encourage people to take the time to design and enjoy it. Right. You know, and that's one thing I've found with you guys. I mean, we have a lot of fun at these meetings. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, you know, there's a lot of thinking and yeah. questioning, but the spirit and the energy is always so positive. And, yeah. and Marie, we're, we're talk, we were just talking about that, how positive it all is. And yeah. that energy always gets infused into those projects. Right. So. Well, and you know, it's it's been really interesting to go down this journey, though, of like designing and planning this house. And we have had our moments where we're like, do we want to build something, you know, this grand and maybe even this large? Because right. what we've had with a family of five kids is now like we're getting to that stage it where changes the, so the fast. kids are, I mean, two of our kids are in college. Yeah. Um, our, you know, we have a sophomore in high school. By the time this thing's done, we'll really have... My son will be like a sophomore and have just a couple more years of, yeah. of being there. And we, we do have the eight-year-old that will be, be yeah, with us for a while. several more years. But all of a sudden, we don't need all the space. And so it's kind of been a life moment, too, to say, okay, you know, what is the right size home right. for us to have? And so we try to kind of pare it back and scale it back a little bit. But it's hard to do once you sort of get there yeah. with, with this beautiful plan that's been – you know, just com completely like, you know, laid out on this, uh, you know, with every every possible sight line and views, um, and, views and, and light coming in windows. Yeah. So we're we are thrilled with what we've what we've created. Well, and I got to commend my team, Damon Wake and Meredith Thompson that have been working, collaborating with with all of us. And, uh, you know, I think that's the key always, too, is just assembling a great team, whether it's in your own personal business or your personal life or with friends. I mean, just. Get with the right people, right. you know. People yep. make the business. Yeah, and then the next, it's all been in our heads, though, and, and kind of on paper. The next part of this is, you know, where it starts to become reality. So the you know, the big part of this team is going to be the, the builder that we select. Right, that's, that's the big piece. Yes. And that's been a tough one for us. Yeah, well, we've got some great builders in Greensboro. We're just we're just trying to kind of figure that out Hone over the next couple it. of months. And I think hopefully by this spring we'll be, uh, we'll be rocking and rolling. Right. Okay, so what do you see on the horizon for Jason Harris in your business, your career, and your life? Wow, now that's that's, that's <laughs> what's a, out there. You were just talking about how your family's going to evolve in, over yeah. the next ten years. Well, I I can't wait to see what you do in the next ten years. Well, to be totally honest, I appreciate with you. that. You know, I want to I want to continue to work hard. I want to stay healthy. I want my family to be healthy and, yeah. and to it's most know, important. To, thing. Yeah, to be to be um, you know to be successful and to find their way and their purpose in life and you know to make sure that they have a really good spiritual foundation um, that. that uh, that you know, sort of centers and grounds them and roots them. Uh, right. You know, and um, you know, just try to make sure that I'm available to them to help them grow uh, and prosper and mature in life and find the right mate and and yeah. you know, just there's a lot of big big things ahead for them, their careers. Oh and, yeah. Um, so that's that's kind of on our minds a lot with just you know, we, being a dad's a big job. Being a dad's a big job. That's, being a husband's a big job. It is, and that's first and foremost. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, I've got professional goals as well. Um, you know, um, this network, I, you know, I really <laughs> is, I am committed to its success. You know, I just want to see it. Um, and I love seeing it sort of take on life of its own yeah. and, and an identity. I really think that it has this potential of being a, a mega influencer in the world of design in that it can, it can be a platform for, right. um, for designers to express themselves, for cons consumers to learn more about uh, this incredible world of design and, and, and home. Sure. Um, so I'm, I really want to see that mature and grow. Obviously, our retail business, um, Furniture Land South, is just absolutely incredible. You know, we've retailed over $3 billion worth of furniture over it's the amazing. last 50 years. I love when you give me a tour through this, this compound. Oh. It's amazing. Well, thank you. Um, that's a huge priority is to, to continue the legacy that my parents built yeah. with the retail business and seeing seeing that successful and maybe it's in some point in time um there's a there's a connection of this network and the retail business yeah. we've got a we, you know we're tr sort of treating them separately at this point 
Um, but I know that that that, that platform is going to give us an opportunity sure. to um, to be more successful um, in our in our retail business. But the other thing is um, giving back. Yeah, you know, there you um, go. I love that. That's a huge part of my vision, even for building this home, Mark. Yep. Um, that I feel like that it can be, um, you know, a ministry to people. It can be a way that we can, you know, fundraise and, yep. and bring, uh, bring people together in, in certain ways and, and, um, and make a difference. Um, you know, I've had some tragedy in my life as well with, uh, you know, with some things like um, depression yep. uh, with my, my mother. Yep. And um, that's something I'm super passionate about is trying to, fi- you know, f- maybe shed a light on uh, mental health. Sure. Um, and uh, especially, you know, what I've learned about that is that um, it really affects women a whole lot more than men. And yeah. so it's something that we don't talk about a lot, but I, that's something I'm passionate about to that's try great. to make a difference in. Yeah. And you can. I mean, world. I think people don't realize. <clears throat> Even a small gesture, small steps make a huge impact when collectively taken together with a lot of other people taking small steps. Yeah. And I think the the key, just like you said earlier in the interview, is just get started. Just start doing something, you know. So I commend you on that. I'm a, I'm a big proponent of, of finding ways to help other people. Yeah, and my along biggest the way. dream is just to be able to be in a place where I can go to Italy with you one day. <laughs> now you're talking. <laughs> We're definitely going to make that happen someday. I think what I love about these podcasts that I'm starting to learn is how fun this will be to play six years from now right? and hear what we said today yeah. six years from now and see where we are. Right. So I hope you join me six years from now because you know, maybe we'll do the podcast in Italy. How's that? It's funny. I remember growing up and my, you know, I'd, I'd want to do something so badly and my dad would just totally advise me against it. And he's, he would ask me the question and said, are you are you smarter than you were five years ago? <laughs> and I'll say, yeah. Well, you're going to be smarter than you are right now five years, years from, from now. now. Yeah. You know, you just – and so it, it is funny how you grow and you learn. Yeah. Well, I always tell people that today is the youngest you'll ever be again, and today's also the smartest day you've ever been. Right. All on the same day. Yeah. So true. think about it from that perspective. Absolutely. What are you going to do today? Yeah. You know. And I, I watched your Instagram story this morning, and <laughs> you know you're you're an early riser. Oh yeah. You know, and one of the I can't wait for the day to get started. Well, and you're like, let's make it a great day. Yeah. You know, own the day. Yeah. I mean, that's just. Carpe totally. diem, right? Absolutely. Okay, so how do we find you? How do we get to your website, Instagram? Give us all that real quick. Sure. I mean, it's, uh, I don't know, how do you find me? Uh, <laughs> I know I'm where just, to find you. Right? I mean, I, I'm just, I don't even know what my Instagram handle is. Mark. Um, it's just Jason I'll Harris. put it in the story. I'll Jason put it in the, on the episode story so you yeah. can go there and I get mean, all the info. Our platform, the Design Network, you can find it, yep. t- tdn.tv. There you really go. simple. Of course, we're on Roku and Apple TV on, on our own apps. We have a YouTube channel. Yep. Um, Check it out. You'll love it. In November, we're going to be on the Roku channel, which is one of the top five channels on the Roku device. We're going to yep. be on Samsung TV Plus and Vizio Watch Free with this 24-hour-a-day stream. Uh, awesome. And, of course, you, need to, you everyone needs to come to Furniture Land South to check out this amazing place. and yeah. 1.3 million square feet of showroom space and a uh, 1,000 brands of furniture. So come, come look me up here. <clears throat> All right, man. Well, thank you so much. I know you're busy. I appreciate yeah. the time today. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Jason. Enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Jason Harris. That was absolutely awesome. I, got, I tell you what, the guy peeled himself away from everything he's got going. I sat with him on the set of Couch this morning with Carson Cressley. I tell you, that was so much fun. I was part of the studio audience. We were laughing, cheering. We got the band in there. The, the guy who runs the band, Roy, I'm sorry, I don't know his last name. Uh, he is phenomenal. He actually flew out for my birthday back in 2015 and performed for us over at... Um, Clayton on the, in the park. And uh, so it was kind of fun to re- reunite with him, spend some time with Jason, and then get him on the podcast. So thanks so much. It's one of the main reasons I love coming out here is just hooking up with him and his family and the design network in Furniture Land South. So check everything out. Go to the story, get the bio, get his links, and uh, he's a fun guy to follow, okay? So we've got a little bit more coming from the market. Uh, one more podcast And so stay tuned for that because we'll finish up with uh, thoughts from both Isabel and her associate Nika and myself. And I've got uh, my friend Marco from Italia, from Art Italia. He'll be uh, on the next podcast. You'll, You'll enjoy listening to that. All right. Talk to you soon. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed our podcast. We encourage you to write a review, screenshot it, and share it with your friends. Please instant message it to me and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We thank you for listening and we look forward to sharing 
more insights to inspiring living next week.